maybe you out there need to recognize someone's ankle on stage. So perhaps Sony is uh, giving you that ability. Maybe I just don't understand. But anyway, it's coming in 2.0 software, so we're going to see everybody. I'm Chad with Take One Broadcast Solutions here in Nashville, Tennessee, and today we're going to be talking about PDZ cameras. A little bit of an update here, specifically the Sony BRC AM7. There is a version 2.0 firmware coming out that I think is going to be kind of a big deal. Traditionally, over the last several years, all the big major manufacturers of PTCs have been working on auto tracking because, again, it just uh, seems like a natural evolution of PTZ cameras that the more robotic cameras are going to take on a lot of the features of uh, tracking with the subject and moving and so forth. And let's just be honest, they, it's not that great, right? It's not that great, but we're getting better. And it's like everything else in technology, as we move forward, things improve. I think this version 2.0 for the AM7 is gonna be a big deal for Sony. And today we're gonna get into a few of the things that I think are going to help make this a little bit there. Is it gonna get us all the way there? I don't know, but uh, it's a good step in the right direction. One of the things that we're going to talk about, first of all, is just the auto framing functions, because when, you know, traditionally in the old uh, tracking software, it'll track a person pretty well and it sees and, you know, but framing is kind of a big deal. And one of the great things about camera operators is they can feel where that framing needs to be naturally. Now this version 2.0 has got some uh, some magic juice in there that's going to tell the camera how to lead the subject. And there's some different settings to do that. And so one of the f first features is called lead room effect. And that's essentially what this is. You can tell the camera how much lead room to place in front of the subject. So if you've got a profile sitting on the, a guy with a profile sitting on a couch, the camera will automatically lean uh, and pan so that, you know, there's some lead room in there and kind of just replicates what you would expect out of a camera operator. The other thing that's going to be sort of cool, and I can see this in especially corporate applications. And I think most of these, frankly, are probably going to be really strong in corporate applications. Also churches as well, churches, anything with a stage and you have people coming on and off, I think this is where you're gonna see a lot of these. This one is a multi-person framing. I think this is pretty cool. So centers up the guy in the middle, pretty obvious there. Uh, one thing that I've noticed on this when I watched it was the headroom uh, left a lot to be desired. And I thought maybe that was a flaw within the camera, but turns out it looks like their framing box is set high on the bottom right-hand corner there. So I think that's not the camera as much as it is the user setup. So, but anyway, you've got a primary subject that frames up everybody pretty nicely there. And because you selected number one and, or number two, um, it will stick with that person. So there you go. It, you know, it's a little choppy, a little rough, but um, it, uh, to keep framing, I think in this type of environment for a corporate environment, I think it's perfect. But this one is kind of interesting to me. This is one that I haven't seen before it's called face registration. And I think the application for here is when you have, uh, let's say a boardroom, and there's really only one person that you want to um, have the camera focus on, but yet you've got 10 people in the room. How does the camera going to know which is the person I need to be focusing on? Who is the primary subject? So right now we're going to capture a face. You see it automatically picks up that there's a face there. So we're gonna register that name and her name is Anna. So. Anna is going to get registered in there and you see that she is added within a database into the software and she gets a priority. So she's number one. And so this is going to give priority over all the different faces that the camera recognizes, which I think is a great, great feature. And there's going to be some faces too that are not registered and it will uh, obviously move past those faces. So it sees the register. There's Anna. So it's going to track her. It's going to get in there. Nice framing, fairly, you know, uh, doing what you'd expect it to do. I don't think that really smoothness or anything is really that important here. I think we're trying to capture um, capture uh, what's happening here. So you, you see there's some blockages. I think it's a good example of her face getting blocked, but the camera picks right back up. And now, hey, where did she go? Uh, so this is a good example of what it does. And I think this is actually pretty good, a good example, because the camera just doesn't panic. It just goes back wide and, oh, hey, there's Anna. There she is back back at it. So I think that's kind of a big deal. This is something that's new and we're really getting into the place now where we're starting to train the cameras to be able to do the things where an operator that only the operator would know. Uh, the camera can now be programmed to say, hey, here's what's important. Here's what we need to focus on. Now, tracking range is another really cool one because if you do have a large stage and people are going to be coming on and off, you. Uh, have a presenter and he walks off stage, you may not want your camera to just continue to follow him way off stage left or right. Maybe you've got different acts, different entertainers, corporate presentations. 
Guy steps on the stage, there he is, and it's going to frame up and give you what you want. And if you notice here, that headroom and uh, is a lot more comfortable. I think that uh, that was definitely a user error early on. But there he goes, walks off the stage, out of the box. And uh, one other thing I've noticed is that there's a little bit of buffer here. It's uh, got some breathing room. Probably something you can adjust, but I think that's good. It keeps things from being too harsh. So new speaker comes on and she's in the area. There you go. Multi-person framing is kicking in here. Oh, there's two people. Look, at centers right up. That's really sweet. I like it. Now they're kind of far apart, a little awkward, but the camera doesn't care. We're just going to pull it on out. And there you go. Everybody's framed up really nicely. Here's a scenario where I... Personally, this is a personal opinion here, not anything knocking Sony or what they're doing, but I don't think this is the best environment for the auto tracking feature. Music is just one of those things where you want to have an operator, a real human operator that might be an extension of the music and the band. Uh, because what you get right here is something that, yeah, it's tracking her, but there's just nothing there. There's no feeling, no emotion in the shots. She's out of that protected range. So I was just going to pull wide with a lock off there and Again, you know, if you don't have the luxury of an operator, hey, this is better than nothing. Yes. The other part is there's a detection part. You know, we have faces and bodies and so forth. This one's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this works in real life, but uh, they've added a detection part, and that is called ankle. It'll recognize your ankle. Ah, let's see what happens. I don't know. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe you out there need to recognize someone's ankle on stage. So perhaps Sony is... Uh, giving you that ability. Maybe I just don't understand. But anyway, it's coming in 2.0 software, so we're going to see everybody. All right. Another thing that's going to be um, expanded into is the range of remote capabilities that these cameras can offer. And I think one thing is great about um, cameras being more into the IP world now, we're starting to really embrace remote production more so than ever. And remote production is also becoming the norm. It's not something that's just done on a high-end broadcast level. It's done at the local level, corporate level, churches. So anyone can do remote production, easily and affordable. All the bandwidth is out there and uh, we can do that. And so S Sony is really good as far as bringing in everything into their ecosystem. And uh, even though they still support uh, ancient technology such as Visca, and yes, the AM7 supports Visca, it's, um, old protocols, but of course the IP side is really where everybody is going and having that remote network uh, is going to be essential. CNA is the camera network adapter that Sony manufactures. And what it does, it allows you to bring all your equipment, your controllers, your cameras, any peripherals in on a network. And it gives you a web GUI where you can go in there and you can control these at a pretty deep level. Uh, so it is certainly compatible with that. Remote production and everything is going to be the same. Uh, you can control this locally through your IP controllers, or you can do it from on the other side of the world if you want to. But uh, it makes it really... Uh, flexible when it comes to IP, IT integration um, and operating your cameras over IP. Sony loves to add that software license. And yes, it is an additional expense add-on. It does not come with it. Always make sure before buying these products that everything that you want is included or don't, be, don't want to be surprised. If you're in the virtual reality or augmented reality, like you know, enhanced news productions and, and so forth. There's going to be some features that are going to be important for you as well. Uh, this update gives you multiple outputs for 3D protocols, and it also gives you some camera position offset data outputs for 3D protocols. So that might be helpful for you as well. Uh, there are some new preset positions. This is, again, I think just the presets of the camera itself. Clear optical zoom, I'm always a little skeptical of because anything out of optical range in, or anything that says enhanced, you're losing something there. It's not, it's not real. Um, I always approach those with caution because, you know, we just want to make sure uh, that when you're enhancing and zooming digitally that you don't get any artifacting. But TBD, I, uh, 1.5 is very modest, so we'll give that a, we'll give that a shot. Uh, and see how that looks. There's uh, also giving you the features for interval recording because the AM7 does allow you to record onto cards internally into the camera. Uh, cache recording, so you don't miss that magic moment. There's a soft skin effect that it's going to include there as well. And uh, there's a paint and look in one scene file to easily share. Um, that will give you the ability to move those files onto other cameras seamlessly. But anyway, here's all the other breakdowns, including that ankle uh framing detection maybe that's going to be a big deal i'm looking forward to checking that out myself so the 2.0 software is coming out soon sony uh officially says summer of 2025 but uh, we've also seen july of 2025 so either way it's coming out real soon a lot packed into this update this is going to be a big deal 
So uh, we're looking to see where Sony is going to be taking that. I can't wait to get my hands on a AR7 with a 2.0. As soon as we get in here in the studio, we're going to make sure to get that, uh, test it for you, and we're going to give you our thoughts and feedback on the version 2.0 from Sony. So if you have any other questions or want some more information about what this 2.0 software can do for you, give us a call at 1-877-81-TAKE-1. You can also find us on our website, Take One. TV. And if you like this content and want to see more of this kind of stuff, just give us a thumbs up, like, and uh, we'll just keep cranking it out for you. We got a lot to talk about. There's a lot happening here in the world of broadcasting. And so we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.